Hey guys, it's me, that weasel, sitting here in the, in the, in the, the other dungeon. So I finally got everything unpacked and, and put all over the place. I got my coffee and I got my damn everything. So Prager you. For those of you who have been living under a rock for the last ten years, I'm so sorry. Prager U is a university run by a human who is there to educate people online. The opponents of Merry Christmas and other uses of the word Christmas know exactly what they're doing. They're disingenuous when they dismiss defenders of Merry Christmas as fabricating some, quote, war on Christmas. Anyway, since the last time I made fun of them, they've made a children's show, which is I think entirely animated in character animate, the, the, the fucking Adobe program. Because the characters, they bob around and shit. I need a new chair. Okay, well, uh, the design for the little, uh, boy is fine, I guess. Yeah, he looks kind of normal. His feet and legs are sort of weird. You know, it's okay to give a character depth. You can put their shoes in front of them. They don't need to be splayed out like that. As for Layla, 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 uh, I don't know why she's not looking at the camera, and I don't know why her facial expression makes it look like she's got a hemorrhage, but let's keep going. Hey Leo, what you doing out here? Recreating the opening to Apollo 13. Hey Leo, what you doing out here? We're just like Tom Hanks. We're serious, take us seriously. Just looking at the moon. It's really big tonight. <laughs> you fucking idiot. The moon's the same size every night. You moron. I just saw your new soccer trophy. Very cool. You know, my older sibling shot me with a pellet gun. I don't... I don't know where this niceness is coming from. I didn't win the trophy. We lost every match and I played terrible. I even lost my spine. Now I have to hold myself up with my abdominal muscles alone. We lost every match and I played terrible. Everyone got one for participating. Ah, uh, yes, remember? Remember 50,000 years ago when people were shouting about participation trophies? That's right, Dennis. You're not out of touch. The young kids love talking about participation trophies. Like an 80-year-old man. Also, side note, I can't confirm, but I've read rumors online that Leo is voiced by Dennis himself with some voice modulation. I'm not sure how accurate that is, just because that's pretty decent voice modulation. And I don't know if Prager you would know how to do that. But if that is actually Dennis Prager playing a little boy talking about participation trophies, that's both very funny and very sad. Congrats! Well, at least it looks good. I mean, it's a reminder of your failure, but at least it's pretty. Bigger than most of my trophies. That I earned. Just saying. Yeah, I guess, but honestly, it makes me feel weird. Like all my bones turned to cartilage. Trophies are good, but I don't feel like I earned it. That's right, Dennis. This is how kids talk. They say shit like, you know, I don't think I earned that award. Especially kids Leo's age. You're definitely not wanting ice cream or just out there looking at the stars, not really thinking of anything. No, no, Leo here is going, you know, kids today get participation trophies and I don't think they've earned them. Also, let's get rid of capital gains tax. My coach said we should feel good because we tried, so I guess I should be proud, but I don't know. Yes, Dennis, that's how they talk. Yeah, it is a little weird to get a trophy when you lose. Remember? Remember 2015? Remember participation trophies? This is relevant. You are so good at sports, you almost never lose. Well, to be fair, Leo, she is a gymnast with no bones. Leo, competition is good for you, and it might not feel like it, but losing is actually good for you too. Why would losing ever be a good thing? If you were in a race to go be the first to get eaten by cannibals? 
I mean, it's an edge case, but I mean, that would be a good thing. Life's famous winners started with losses. Like who? Like Loser Man. Yeah, let's go. Let's go what? All she did was take out her phone. I don't know. I'm just not feeling very happy recently. Oh, yeah? Yeah, let's go! Let's see. Oh, no, no, don't trust the travel through time app. That thing's full of spyware. <laughs> Was it really necessary for them to scream? Is the time travel process painful? Layla! We're in outer space! Where no one can hear you scream! Leo, I think we're on the moon! Nah, judging from the size, it's more like you're on a small asteroid. I'm actually kind of surprised something that little can have... gravity. Also, you're both very dead. You're out in space without a spacesuit. I mean, maybe the helmets have a perfect seal around your heads? But all that's gonna do is force your diaphragms out and make your lungs burst. Also, all the blood in your body is about to boil. So... Yeah. Was my phone listening to us? Yes, your phone does listen to you. That's not even a joke. Your phone listens to you. You just were talking about the moon. This can't be right. You told it to go to the fucking moon, didn't you? Wait, hold on. No, wait, you didn't tell it to go to the moon. You told it to go to a value competition? And it took you to the moon and not to like a NASCAR race or something. But okay, maybe it's a historical competition. And I guess in that sense, the space race is a, you know, that's a pretty big competition. And I guess if we're going off the theme of, you know, people losing and learning from their losses to win, you wouldn't start with the people who actually won the first parts of the space race, the Soviets. Also, you wouldn't start with them because, you know, the Soviets. But there were other competitions, like the competition to find the Northwest Passage. That would have been a fun episode if they, if they had, like, transported aboard Franklin's ship. Would have been a more interesting lesson than this one, but okay. I don't like where this computer's taking us. I'm gonna take over and land us manually. Neil! Do we have enough fuel? We're almost out! I got this. Okay, well, manually piloting the Lem was always a thing. So I'm not sure why it's such a shock that he's like, I'm gonna take it in manually. I mean, yeah, they did start running low on fuel on the descent, but astronauts are very professional people. They don't just shout. Buzz Aldrin was not shouting, Oh my God, we're gonna glue to get a temperature. OMG, this is incredible. We won. You will then uh, be collecting a bulk sample. Neil! You've got a call! It's the president! We'll then pick up uh, the equipment for a documented sample in detail. Yeah, he doesn't sound like a Duck Dynasty character, sorry. I also find it kind of funny that you're using the moon landing, considering that you guys had notorious idiot Owen Benjamin on your show, who, among other things, is a moon landing denier. And we all know how Buzz Aldrin feels about them. I've ever thought of it. Saying I misrepresented myself. Get away from me. You're a coward and a liar and a thief. The eagle has landed. Leo, aliens? Your homeschooling has failed you. Either aliens or astronauts. Or astronaut aliens. OMG, this is incredible. We won. Buzz, buzz, easy. I'm gonna go out there and fulfill the mission. They both went out there. It was actually a big deal uh, when they found out what the um, egress order was going to be. Because Buzz Aldrin was kind of miffed at that. Okay, I'll get everything else ready. Buzz Aldrin also went outside. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Okay, the ladder was built into one of the leg struts, and that would have just been fucking easy to do on this. I mean, shit, you wouldn't have had to have animated anything. You just put some bars on that leg. Also, Armstrong is coming out of the wrong side of the limb. Historical accuracy! That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. That's one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. Ah! Aliens! No, 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 no. We're not aliens. 
No, we're totally human. Just look at how we're able to compress our bodies and live in a vacuum. We're Leo and Layla from the future. Well, way to change the timeline, kids. We thought you might be aliens. Ah. Well, we're American astronauts. I'm Neil Armstrong, and Buzz Aldrin is in the lunar module. I'm glad that everyone's helmet is synced up to everyone else's radio frequency. That makes this way more convenient. Also, they're both totally dead. But anyway... It's the summer of 1969. What are you doing here? Neil, you don't have your life support attached to you. You've got maybe 30 seconds of air in that suit. You need to get the fuck out of there. We're trying to learn about competition, and for some reason our time machine delivered us here. You have a time machine? I'm pretty sure that's something I need to take back to Earth for the US government. It might have made a mistake. Uh-huh. Actually, you're in the perfect time and place. Oh yeah, they were they were there when the Lem landed. So they were probably sprayed with moon rocks going the speed of bullets. They are double 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 dead. After the massive destruction of World War II, the two most powerful countries were the United States of America and the Soviet Union. You want to maybe tilt the earth a little bit so we can get a better idea of the general shape of the countries involved? You know, so America doesn't look like a weird orange blob? These communists called themselves Soviets, and the new country they set up was called the Soviet Union. Over the years, the Soviets expanded their territory. <laughs> they lo I love how they added in like the evil like <laughs> noise to the Soviet Union, like to the to the fucking Soviet Union. I mean, you want to start somewhere with the space race. Start with the end of the Second World War. Start with the U.S. scooping up all of the relevant Nazi scientists and bringing them over to their side. I mean, to be fair, the Soviet Union scooped up a bunch too, but the scientists were more willing to go to the U.S. side because there was less a chance of them, you know, dying in a gulag. In fact, the U.S. got so many German scientists for the rocket program that for the first, I don't want to say like, 10 years, it was essentially a German rocket program. And took over many countries. It can be confusing, but just think of Russia as being the biggest country inside the communist-led Soviet Union. Okay, gotcha. No, you don't. And we know from our trip to see President Reagan that communism is a system of government that oppresses people and makes life terrible. Communism is a system of government that is, ostensibly, supposed to get rid of class structure and create an egalitarian society where no one is above anyone else and everyone is more or less on an equal playing field. But of course, like any government, shit just doesn't work out that way. So Soviet communism is more along the lines of, hey, are you loyal to the party? Okay, you actually get to do things? Also, Reagan doesn't get to tell us anything about who is oppressing who. Just saying, the guy whose administration laughed about AIDS deaths does not get to tell the rest of us how oppressed anyone was. Whoa, whoa. Ronald Reagan, the actor, became president? Oh, like, Neil Armstrong is gonna know who fucking Reagan was. Reagan was not a superstar by any means. He was more like a B-movie actor. Yeah, a really good one, too. Next, you're gonna tell me a psychotic property mogul became president later. I'm sorry, am I getting too political with the video from PragerU? Well, it sounds like President Reagan taught you well. While he was having you ship arms to Iran. Communism is very bad. And for the last 25 years, we Americans have been in a battle to stop it. If you're referring to the space race, it's more like the last 10 years. One of the biggest parts of the battle has been a competition for global influence. Influence? Is that like when my mom says to be a good example for Leo? You don't know what the word influence means. You're supposed to be like, what, 15? It's pretty similar. In this competition for influence, America wants to show the world a way of life where people are free is better than the communist way of life where people are controlled by their government. <laughs> no! The Cold War battle for geopolitical influence had everything to do with us thinking we were about to fight another global war with the Soviets. If it had anything to do with freedom, we wouldn't have propped up so many dictators. What does you and Buzz coming to the moon have to do with it? And Michael Collins. You know, the guy in the 
fucking command module in orbit around the moon. You know, him? Yeah, I guess you guys don't give a shit. In this competition, we want to show that the American way of life produces better athletes. Also, I can't tell, but is there something wrong with the NASA logo on his spacesuit? The letters are all, like, blurred out. Why would PragerU get rid of the NASA letters on the NASA logo? The American way of life produces better athletes, better art, better food, better everything. Okay, well, two of those are highly subjective. That includes better technology. And there's no better demonstration of technology than space exploration. Uh, you know, actually, yeah. All right, okay, I'll give you that one. That's, that is one of the, one of the big things, yeah. We and the Soviets have been competing for years now to see who can win the space race. And until today, we kept losing. America? Losers? No way. No way. We're always winner. How? Oh my god, dude. His hand just went up inside his fucking helmet. It's not, it's... That is such an easy thing to see and avoid. I mean, even if you don't want to make any modifications to the helmet, like you don't want to deal with it, just put a purplish square inside the helmet. It doesn't even have to match up with the edge so long as his hand just doesn't show up inside his fucking helmet. See, now that I've seen that, I'm, I'm like just starting to go like, okay, so there's not even a seal around the helmet. So if there was air inside the helmet when he got transported to the moon, it should have just launched off his fucking head. This poor kid shouldn't have a face. First, we competed to see who could get a satellite into space. They won. But they didn't have to. America didn't have to lose that one. Von Braun could have had a satellite in orbit months before Sputnik, but the government wanted the Navy to make the launch. Then the communists were the first to get a living creature into space. And then the really big one, the Soviets beat us into getting a man into space. We've had so many failures over the years, but we never gave up. I mean, we almost did, but whatever. Were the failures devastating? Did you get a participation trophy? Yes, Dennis. That's right. We're all still talking about participation trophies, Dennis. That's... That's the big story, Dennis. You're absolutely right. Nope. I didn't need one of those. And look, no one likes to fail. But it's the part of life that leads to success. Are you saying it's good to lose? It's the pain of losing that drives a person to improve. It's good to learn from losing. So the road to victory is paved with losses. Without our losses in the space race, we wouldn't be standing on the moon today. But also all the scientists and government funding and lots and lots of money. Lots and lots of money. That's why it's so great when you have a coach who pushes you to be a winner. That's right, Dennis. You're a coach. You're our politics daddy, Dennis. You're so good and strong and brave, Dennis. You know that we don't want a participation trophy. You're definitely not an out of touch 70 fucking year old guy being all creepy with oil money. No, you're Dennis Prager. You get the young kids. You understand this generation, Dennis. In fact, after the Soviets got the first man into space, the guy who was sort of like our coach, President John F. Kennedy, challenged our entire nation to work, to improve, and to do the unthinkable. Agree to the terms of the civil rights movement and end discrimination in the United States by federal edict. I'm kidding. It was to go to the moon. It was to go to the moon. I just, it's a cheap shot, and yes, it was a big important thing. We, we, that was a thing. In fact, it was such a shock to NASA, they had to do a bunch of internal studies immediately after that speech just to see if it was even remotely possible. JFK challenged America to be the first to put a man on the moon. And return him safely to Earth. That was... That was the really big thing. We could have gotten a man on the moon in 1955 if we didn't mind crashing a corpse on its surface. But why some say the moon? Why choose this as our goal? Could you have maybe gotten somebody who sounds even remotely like Kennedy to do his voice? We choose to go to the moon not because it is easy, but because it is hard. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. 
I know this might be news to the people who work at PragerU and their primary viewers, but Kennedy did not look like this. It is a goal that will organize our energy and skill. It is a challenge we are willing to accept and one we intend to win. You know, he, he th this was actually a part of a recorded speech. You could have just used the actual speech. Fuck, you could have used the actual video if you wanted. You didn't have to get Jim Bob to go over there and try and do a Kennedy impersonation. It sounds like President Kennedy was a good coach. He certainly was a great motivator. Especially with Monroe. He persuaded the government, private business, and every American man, woman, and child to make sacrifices and work together. Okay, I'm, I'm not sure if every child made sacrifices for the space program. And then under eight years, here we are. We won. This makes me proud to be an American. It's cool to see what PragerU considers low-level propaganda, where the kid character is literally just saying, this makes me proud to be an American. And you should be too. Me too. Oil money is good. What an accomplishment. You know, it's funny that he brings that up, but I remember listening to an NPR interview with one of the Apollo astronauts that walked around on the moon, and he actually addressed that. Uh, he said, like, well, you know, a lot of people ask me, like, what was the moon like? Isn't the moon amazing? And to me, it's just like a place I went to work. And it is kind of interesting, because once you get down to it, yeah, it is amazing to be on the moon. But it's also a featureless, gray lifeless wasteland. It's kind of like going out to the desert in New Mexico. Initially, yes, it is amazing. But that wears off real fast. Neil, you've got a call. It's the president. Well, kids, it's been nice talking to you, but I've got to get back to work. You know, Buzz Aldrin's also in that command module. I know I keep like, come on, man. He also walked around on the... Where is Buzz? I guess animating two astronauts, though, would have been kind of hard. Getting another puppet pin rig in there and everything. Of course, Mr. Armstrong. It's been an honor to meet you. Along with Buzz, who should also be out of the lem by now. Yeah, thanks to you and all the other Americans that made this happen. Oh my god. Did they literally not change the fucking background? Let's see, let's see that again. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, thanks to you and all the other Americans that made this happen. Holy shit, PragerU, how fucking lazy are you? Seriously, you can't make another moonscape? Can't just zoom in a little bit on this one? This is some go animate levels of bullshit. Hello, Mr. President. Thank you. You feel better? I don't know, sis. You want to actually look at me? You feel better? You feel better? Yeah. Going to keep competing? Totally. I want to be able to earn enough money to help you with your eye surgery so you can actually look around instead of needing to tilt your whole head and body around like a fucking owl. If I get more participation trophies, no problem. I'm not going to let trophies of any kind affect me. That's right, Dennis. That's what we're talking about now. It's still 2014, Dennis. Don't worry. Go eat your soup. I'm just going to work to get better. If I turn my weak foot into a strength, I'll be really tough to stop. Love it. Love it. Let's get home. Would it be too dark for me to put blood all over the place during every, like, time travel transition? Hey, Buzz, are you ready to get out of here? I can't believe I forgot the golf clubs. I didn't bring... that was a different... that was a different... crew. It wasn't officially made... it wasn't... it wasn't signed off on by NASA. They snuck them on. They were specially made aluminum golf... like, god damn it. You're pissing me off. You're really pissing me off. Also, where's the CSM that they need to be docking with in orbit around the moon? I'm just... Saying, like, you know, I guess Buzz Aldrin talks like this. Michael Collins doesn't exist. Neil Armstrong talks like this, too. Kennedy is on Duck Dynasty talking about... Am I being too, am I being too mean? Am I being too mean? Maybe. But I've had a long fucking week, and it feels good to unload on something. To all the people that are listening and watching tonight, 
God bless you. Okay, you know what? I'll give you guys credit. At least you had an ascent stage come up. I was really worried you were just going to have the whole lander lift up back into space. So, kudos. You got one historical fact right. Congratulations. Great job. Good night from Apollo 11. And according to this short, the Ascent module floated away into space and Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin died in solar orbit. Because historical accuracy is stupid. This is just a kid's show, remember? That doesn't fucking matter. Actually, this is a PragerU kid's show, which is even worse. If you are interested in time traveling again, please subscribe to PragerU.com slash kids. No. Anyway, this is That Weasel. If you like that video, like, comment, subscribe down below. And hey, if you really want to support this channel, you can be a patron for just a dollar like these people. Look at him go. Now that I've moved and everything is kind of stabilizing, I'm going to try and get these videos out way more regularly and i know i keep saying that but trust me this is this is i'm gonna be really fucking trying to do this and as always have a good day